folks, Nick Mock 007 here again, and science is back. That's right, back in black, back from the future, the Empire Strikes Back. And to kick the reunion off, I wanted to talk about something near and dear to my heart, air. Now, we take it for granted, but in our planet tanks, we probably don't pay enough attention to the balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide. So today, I wanted us to take a few minutes to think about these two gases. Uh, for those of us using CO2, particularly pressurized, we spend a lot of time trying to dial it in. Uh, too much and we gas our fish. Too little, plant growth is stifled and we get algae. But we really don't consider the flip side, oxygen. Now, I'm going to assume that none of you are using pressurized oxygen setups, uh, nor would I really advise it unless you have any fish with COPD. Uh, but first, a very, very quick review of how a fish breathes. So, a fish breathes by taking water into its mouth and forcing it out through the gills. Pretty simple. Now, as water passes over the thin walls of the gills, dissolved oxygen moves into the blood and CO2 out. At a, the most simple level, oxygen and carbon dioxide passively diffuse along their concentration gradients, or more correctly put, partial pressures, meaning from areas of high concentration to low concentration. In the gills, CO2 is exchanged for oxygen, just like in the lungs, uh, and then the oxygen-rich blood is distributed throughout the body's tissues. Now, interestingly, we all know that high levels of CO2 can be de deadly to our fish, but oxygen, relatively speaking, is much more toxic than CO2. In our tanks, 500% saturation of carbon dioxide would only be 4 to 10 parts per million. And this, as we all know, is harmless to our fish. But what about 500% saturation in oxygen? Death. That's right, all our fish would quickly die. While we know to shoot for 30 parts per million CO2, we ought to be aiming for about 7 to 10 parts per million for the oxygen, especially when we're supplementing with CO2. So remember, oxygen is highly toxic even just around 150% saturation. But now here's the million dollar question, and one that I've heard incorrectly discussed. If you have very high levels of CO2 in your tank, think pressurized CO2, what are your levels of oxygen? Now, if you answer that oxygen levels are independent of CO2 levels, then you're correct. The rest of you have to stay till 4 p.m. for detention. But this does not mean that the various ratios like high CO2 to low O2 or high CO2 to high O2 don't have different effects on our fish. So let me explain. First off, oxygen and carbon dioxide are separate, like I mentioned. Having high levels of CO2 does not in any way push out oxygen. So in your tank, you can have high levels of CO2 and high levels of oxygen, or high levels of CO2 and low levels of oxygen, or anything in between. So when you gas your fish from too much CO2, this doesn't tell you anything about your oxygen levels. Now, in order to save your fish in this kind of situation, you need to remove the CO2. People accomplish this by increasing surface movement and water changes. But remember, the goal in this scenario is, not to, uh, is to decrease uh, excess CO2, not decrease oxygen, or excuse me, not increase oxygen. But here is where it gets a little bit complicated. Remember how I told you that oxygen and carbon dioxide passively diffuse along their concentration gradients? Well, if respiration was just this simple, then you would hypothesize that raising CO2 levels high enough would make it impossible for fish to get rid of CO2 in the blood, therefore resulting in acidosis, which if bad enough will kill the fish. And you would also hypothesize that um, that it would occur regardless of the oxygen levels, which we now know is independent of the carbon dioxide levels. Well, true, excessive CO2 will kill your fish, but it turns out that increasing oxygen levels can actually allow you to push your CO2 to higher levels. Now, there haven't been many studies done on this, and most are on fish we don't really keep in our aquariums, like carp and trout, but the point is that the data shows that with higher levels of oxygen, fish can actually tolerate higher levels of CO2 though I haven't been able to find a really good explanation for why this is the case. But the point I want everyone to take away from the discussion today is that while levels of CO2 and oxygen are independent, their ratios in our tank can have vastly different effects on our livestock. So for those of us growing plants, we need to aim for high CO2, 30 to 45 parts per million, and high oxygen, probably 7 to 10 parts per million. So in summary, when talking about our fish and forgetting about plants for a minute, too much, ox too much oxygen is bad, too little oxygen is bad, too much CO2 is bad, but too little CO2 is actually okay. 
But put all these facts together, and for those of us who use pressurized CO2, what I would suggest for a healthy planted tank is to have enough surface movement to just barely not break the surface of the water, but to keep a strong ripple going. Now, I know people always say little surface movement is better since you're going to lose CO2, but as I've told you, you can actually push CO2 to higher levels if you also have higher oxygen. So keeping a good ripple, yes, may cause some CO2 to gas off, but you'll also have higher oxygen. And increasing CO2 is simple. Just add more, folks. Turn up the needle valve. In fact, turn it up to 11 if you have to, but it just makes good sense and good science as well. Your fish and plants will also thank you for it. Heck, mine threw me a surprise party Friday night. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Remember, keep breathing and everything will be okay. And may the force be with you.